Hey everyone, welcome to the 30 Day Speaker Summit. Um, I got an amazing guest with me um, in this interview, Justine Levenberg. And you know, this is one of your first interviews that you're watching in the summit. My name is Daniel Francis. I'm the creator of the Master Your Stutter program. And this is called the 30 Day Speaker Summit, where I interview 30 different speakers with different perspectives who have been successful in their own way, whether it's building relationships, whether it's building a business and their professional life, public speaking, overcoming any speech impediments. And I, as the host, am interviewing for them to share their story so you could learn all these golden nuggets and start applying this to your life. So before Justine says anything, I want to introduce her and kind of give you a quick background. Cool. So Justine Levenberg is a multifaceted entrepreneur um, with an overarching mission of helping others to maximize their potential in life. Justine is the owner of two sport ball franchises throughout Vancouver, BC, my favorite province and city. Uh, Justine puts her passion into action by leading a team of 45 young professionals who all share a common interest of introducing young children to the love of physical activity. Justine is also the founder Founding partner for Impact Entrepreneurs, a coaching company that focuses on helping entrepreneurs launch and grow their business while making a positive impact in the world. Uh, the business offers private coaching and masterminds and monthly events to build a community of like-minded entrepreneurs, which I think I'm a part of. Um, when, <laughs> when she is now working on building and leading her companies, you can catch her hiking in the mountains, jealous, in, in Whistler or playing on the beach in Costa Rica with her family. And in this... Um, in this interview specifically, uh, we're going to be talking about this concept of vulnerability and what it really took for Justine to create all the success in her life and for her to be who she is today. So Justine, welcome to the show. Oh, amazing. Amazing. First of all, thank you so much for having me. And I am so pumped to be here. And um, what an amazing experience that you've created and um, just so honored to be a part of it. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's just, let's just get, let's get into it and, and find as many golden nuggets and gems um, that are within this topic, because I know throughout your whole career and life in general, um, you had to be vulnerable. You really had to get yourself out there. And I think this is one of the biggest um, factors for holding people back for success in achieving new things in their life. So what does vulnerability mean to you and why should people be aware of it? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Um, whew, it, Big, big question. I love that we're like just going right into that. Um, I would say like vulnerability and putting yourself out there. Um, you know, I think that I, I, can, I can kind of explain it through sharing some of my story. Um, I moved to Vancouver at a really young age of 19 years old, um, actually to start up a business. Um, I was working in a company in Toronto, fell in love with the program and brought it over to Vancouver to start it up there. And um, during that time, I think it was a very, um, I mean, I was 19 years old. It was a very challenging um, stage of my life of moving to a new city, not knowing anyone, looking to build um, a new brand and create awareness. And that, that comes, that, that takes, you know, it's not something that just happens overnight. And there really is an element of really needing to put yourself out there and, you um, not allowing the the fear and the you know but what if it doesn't work out and and you know all of the um all of the worries that we have as humans that everybody experiences but really pushing past that and really just showing up as this is who i am this is what i'm here to do i believe in this product i believe in this business and really just going forward with that um with with honesty and love and self-compassion um, and not listening to that fear and doubt of, you know, all of the, I, I would say, negative self-talk of what if it doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, were you, how are you, how are you, you know, a younger version, like 19 years old or before that? Um, was this a big deal for you? Were you scared of what other people thought? Um, you know, like, take us back to that, Jess. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. I mean, there were definitely months and years, I would say, um, of 
a, a lot of fear and doubt. You know, I've, I've, I made a big move to um, leave, leave home at a young age and uh, take a chance on, on starting up a, a business and a new career. And there's a lot of fear in that. And, you know, I think with anyone who's either started a business or is at a crossroads in their life and, you know, waiting or deciding if they're going to take that next step, um, there's really putting yourself out there and pushing past that area of, you know, just, just allowing that like vulnerability to just come through and kind of um, just like succumbing to that, you know, like allowing yourself to just, um, not let it overtake you, I would say, um, is definitely what I had to do because there, there were, there was a lot of fear of, you know, I've taken this big leap and what if it doesn't work out? Um, you know, what are people going to think about me? Um, I don't want to, you know, disappoint my, my family and my colleagues that, you know, had taken a chance on me. So there was definitely a lot of fear and worry in those early days of uh, making this big move. And what if it was not going to work out? So how did you make it work? How, how did you push through it? Absolutely. So one of the key elements uh, that I truly believe was um, a really big component of our success with building this business would be the power of building relationships and uh, really putting yourself out there. Um, it was something that I made a very conscious effort to um really speak to people from a place of the passion and love that I had for this business, as opposed to trying to make a sale or trying to get a deal, but really talking about it from a place of genuinely caring about the people that I was getting to interact with. Um, and that's what also made it not feel like work. It really felt like I got to go and, you know, do business deals with people that became friends of mine, um, which made it, which made it super fun, um, you know, over these past 10, 15 years that I've been running this company. Um, it really made a big difference to build genuine relationships along the way. Um, and then in regards to putting yourself out there, I mean, at that stage, I, I was very much the face of the business. And, you know, when you're an entrepreneur and you're the face of the company at that stage, you, you really want to put yourself out there. And, um, and that's what I had to do. I was the one on the front lines of the business. And um, I, it was all about putting myself out there and building those connections and really building up the brand and, uh, and sharing my love for the program. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you mean putting yourself out there as an entrepreneur, what do you mean by that? Um, I think that it's definitely changed, I would say, um, to maybe how it was 15, 20 years ago to how it is today. Um, many years ago, I would say that was more about um, building like on the like face to face relationships, you know, and really going above and beyond. And when you're meeting your clients and meeting your colleagues, not just um, kind of being there for the interaction of a sale or, you know, delivering the service, but rather actually genuinely asking your clients or asking your colleagues, like, what are the things that they're actually interested in doing and, and building that relationship? Um, definitely, like, I would say happened more face to face 15, 20 years ago. Nowadays, I would say putting yourself out there online is a, a complete game changer. Um, one of my coaches that I've been working with, uh, especially during the pandemic, uh, said something so powerful that has really, really, um, really struck me. And uh, it, it's really adjusted how I've been making decisions when it comes to uh, the companies that we run. And he said many years ago, it was all about who you knew in business. It was, you know, connections and networking. And, you know, it was all about who you knew like that. That's how people you know, got to the top and, and scaled their businesses. Um, and nowadays, especially, you know, coming out of this uh, pandemic time, it's now all about who knows you. Mm. And it's really done this change from who do you know to who knows you. And be put to now, if you ask me that question about putting yourself out there, completely different from how it was. I still think that there's a lot of value in having all those interactions, absolutely. But I think that it's really, it's, it's a different game now. And it's all about who knows you. So who knows your business? Who knows your brand? And how can you put yourself out there so that every single day that number is increasing about more and more people of who knows you? Mm -hmm. 
And, and like to get to this state of being very vulnerable and being very open, obviously you've done a lot of work on yourself. Yeah. Uh, would you say like for a lot of people who worry about this vulnerability yeah. of, um, you know, scared of what people are going to think or like, what are some, what are some things that you've done um, that are very practical? Yeah, I love that. Um, definitely, I'm a big, big believer and a big fan of doing personal development work. Um, I myself work with a lot of coaches. Um, I, I think it's, I think it's really important that coaches still have coaches themselves, and um, you know that they're they're asking people to commit to you know their own growth and work with them as a coach, but that they're also doing it, you know, on their. Uh, uh, for themselves as well to, to keep growing and to keep learning because, you know, the, we, we never just reach that top of, you know, kind of I'm here, I'm, I'm at the top, you know, I've, I've done, I've learned everything I need to learn. It's, it's such an ongoing journey of uh, constantly um, learning new things, applying them, adjusting. And um, yeah, so I think personal development, I'm, I'm a big fan of Tony Robbins. I've done um, some of his um, personal, pro, uh, personal development programs, a lot of live courses, business mastery. And um, I've had an opportunity to work with some phenomenal coaches as well who keep me accountable and keep me on track and um, have really been there um, over the years as I have gone through my own entrepreneurial journey and um, has my role in my company has shifted and adjusted from, you know, all the different stages that, uh, that I've been through as well. So, so are you saying to overcome vulnerability, um, having a coach is extremely key? That's been something for me. That's definitely been a game changer. Um, I'm also a big fan of journaling. I, I'm like a pen to paper kind of person, even like now with you today, I have like a, a pen and a paper out. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a little bit old school like that. Um, so for me, like getting thoughts out like onto paper and, you know, just writing things out um, is, is super powerful. So I think that, yeah, if that's something that, uh, you know, when you're watching this, if, if it's something you're already doing, that's awesome. But definitely just taking the ideas and taking what we have in our head and putting it out down on paper um, is, is something that really helps me both, I would say, in my business and in my personal life. Hmm. So why, why do you think that voice is there? Because like, if, 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 if we look at this concept called vulnerability, where you're essentially... I mean, I would love your definition to kind of go a little more in depth, but it's you're you're worried about what other people are going to think, in some shape or form. So you're 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 or you're you're showing completely who you are, but there's that fear of what are people going to think. That's why someone, that's what vulnerability. I don't know if you want to give a better definition, but that's you know kind of like the vague definition of it. Why do you think people worry about that? Why do you think this is really like a a problem for people? And is mm -hmm. the voice in the head and how do you handle that? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, on the first part of that, like, you know, why I think that happens, I think that um, as a society, as a community, like we're raised to be so concerned about how other people are going to think about that. And I think nowadays, like the judgment that happens online, on social media is so powerful in people's lives that it actually debilitates people from making moves and it keeps them frozen um, and stuck in a space potentially that they're really unhappy with because of the fear of the judgment about what would happen if they actually, you know, made the move and, you know, said yes or said no or whatever um, the, the change was. But yeah, I think that I, I love your definition of vulnerability. I think that that's definitely uh, a very real um, experience that a lot of people feel that they refrain from making decisions um, to not have to deal with um, the negative thoughts that, you know, that, that or, or comments or what, whatever it may be. Um, but my experience with vulnerability has been that when people do put themselves out there and are vulnerable and share those sides of themselves that to them might feel embarrassing or, you know, something that is a little bit more of a sensitive topic. Um, my experience with that has been um, that there's, all, it's always received with a, a large amount of love and acceptance and, um, and support. I think that 
as humans, we kind of make it up in our minds, like the, the repercussions are going to be a lot more negative than things actually end up being um, in, in real life and how they actually work out. So how do you handle that negative thought or that negative voice? Would you call it like a negative voice? Um, like, what would yeah, you a negative voice for sure. Like, cause essentially there's like the angel and the devil on your shoulder. Essentially. Yeah. yeah. How do you handle that devil? How do you handle that negative voice? Cause I I, and, and, and does it go anywhere? Yeah. Um, I, I don't believe that the voice ever goes somewhere. I think that people just learn how to react and handle that voice differently. Um, it, it's kind of like from the saying that says like, feel the fear and like do it anyways. Um, that's the exact same thing with like hearing the thoughts in your head that are saying like, don't put yourself out there or don't say that or don't do that because of, you know, how people are going to perceive you. But at the end of the day, um, I'm a big believer in living a life true to yourself, living a life on your own terms. And if you're not living a life on your own terms, because you're worried about what other people are going to think about it, like that to me is, um, is a really tough space to be in. And um, I think that the practice, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a muscle, you know, the more that you push away those thoughts, take the action, make the move. Um, the next time you're faced with those types of scenarios, it actually gets a little bit easier doing it the next time. So it's kind of like, as you start to use that muscle, um, the muscle actually starts to strengthen and uh, you really start to feel just a little bit more comfortable with, um, with, with making those moves. Mm -hmm. And I think also tied to that are haters. So I, I, I think what happens is, um, we have haters in our life or, you mm -hmm. know, even people that you can call friends or family can also yeah. be haters. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's your take on these people and how do you handle haters? Because I think this also stems from the people being closest to you, judging you or yeah, um, yeah like non-believers, whatever you want to call them. Right. Yeah. How, have you ever had haters in your life and how do you handle them? Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, you know, I've, I, I really do feel like I've been very blessed. Uh, my, my family and friends have been very supportive. Even when I approached my parents and told them that I was going to move across the country at 19 and start a company, um, you know, even since day one, I, I had a lot of support and uh, definitely did not take that for granted. Um, I was very, very grateful for that. But I think that the haters are either going to do one or two things. They're either going to fuel you and give you that drive of like, you know what, I'm going to prove them wrong. Like I'm going to show them, you know, that I can do this or that, you know, I believe in me or whatever it is, or you're going to let that voice from the haters actually like put you into that frozen state and hold you back from actually creating the change or making the move. So, you know, that's, that's where it comes down to those moments where you get to choose, you get to decide what, what, what's worth it. Like is living a life literally in a stuck place worth it to you to listen to whatever these haters are telling you. And you are the one who's actually suffering the consequences because you're the one who's not actually living the life that you ultimately want to be living or do you get to go out there and trust in yourself and believe in yourself and have some faith that when you take risks in the world, the universe will also throw you a little bit of a safety net to catch you, um, you know, and have faith in, in putting one foot in front of the other and going and actually making those moves um, and then proving those haters wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you mean by that? Uh, the universe will send you a safety net. What do you mean by yeah. that? Yeah, I, I am a big believer that um, when you make big, bold moves, that, um, that things work out. And uh, the universe just has a really cool way of um, introducing you to the right people, connecting you to you know, the, the next move, or just the way that things work out when you take um, a big step and when you really you know, put yourself out there and um, you, know, you have a lot of courage to make that move. Um, I really do believe that, uh, that the universe is there to uh, support you. Um, it's something that I kind of test out a little bit in my life. Um, my family's recently moved to live in Whistler, um, as you read out there in the beginning in the bio. 
And, um, you know, there was a lot of things that were really scary about that move. And I didn't, you know, th there was a lot of unknowns with, you know, uprooting our family and moving to a new city. But the way that things work out, like when you trust and when you have faith and actually believe that things are going to work out and you actually like hold space for that to happen, that's where, that's where you really like, you're, you're open to receive those opportunities coming your way. Mm. But Ontario is so much nicer than BC. <laughs> I, I heard you at the beginning say uh, how much. I know, I'm uh, kidding. I know how much love you have for BC. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially Whistler. So, so are you living in Whistler right now? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. You used to, you used to live in, in Vancouver, but now you're living yeah. in Whistler. Yeah. Yeah. Phenomenal. We, we moved to Whistler and we're literally living our like most ultimate life in the mountains in Whistler. It's phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, like, you know, you and Mel, you guys live, it's like, it's living a life of risk. And I think there's a lot of people that don't do that. Mm -hmm. um, and all, I think it all connects to this idea of like vulnerability, because it's like, yeah. you're showing, you're like showing yourself to the world of, you know, like, even for myself, when I went online, right, it's, it's, I don't, are people gonna not like me? You yeah. know? Yeah. And I think that I think That's that is. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Like you, you came out with this, you know, amazing new project, new business, and you had to go through that. You had to put yourself out there. And absolutely, as humans, we're all designed where you're going to have like, we're not, nobody is, um, what's the word? Like nobody is like um, safeguarded from having those thoughts. Like everyone experiences them. Some people's negative thoughts might just be a little bit louder than other people's. Like everyone experiences them but it's all about how you react to them. And if you can, you know, shut them out and it's like, it just, you just have to like turn down the volume sometimes and turn up the volume on the other side. That's like, you can do this. I believe in you. This is your purpose. I know that you're meant to be doing this in the world. Like keep going, you got this, you know? And if you could really have your actions aligning more to like that volume being turned up more on that positive side, that supportive side, that's what's going to help you to take those actions. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, I think this is, you know, it it may sound very basic to a lot of people. Like, yeah, just go take action. But it's, uh, you know, um, if you, you really know the stuff when you actually get put into a position of, do I really know this stuff? Yeah. And so, so I want to ask you, um, Jess, as we get closer to the end of the interview of of the, of this interview is. Um, what are some practical things people can start doing right now? Because I, I think COVID made a lot of people very vulnerable, mm -hmm. meaning like uh, it forced people to question their relationship that they're in, to question that the, the job they're in, to question, you know, um, the life they've been living, right? So it, caught, it, it was like a big, a lot of vulnerability was shown. So what, what are some things that people can do about, about you know, um, yeah, I don't know, change. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, I agree with you. I think that it's definitely been a time where um, the spotlight's definitely been shining a little bit, uh, a little bit more on all the key areas of our lives and what's working and what's not working. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, like I, I, I love the quote that says like, the problem is you think you have time. And, you know, a lot of people live their lives and they're like, you know, one day I'm going to go to, you know, take that trip. And one day I'm going to, you know, go, you know, do this amazing adventure that I've always wanted to do. And, you know, so many of us live our lives for like planning to do all of these things that we love to do one day and someday. And, um, you know, I, I had a really big awakening in my life, like quite a few years ago when my dad um, was diagnosed with cancer. And it really changed the perspective for me about how I wanted to live my life. And, when we when we received that news, um, I kind of like about you know what people have been experiencing now during COVID time during the pandemic, that kind of happened to me a few years ago, and I I did a very big um, overview of my world and what was working for me and what wasn't working and what were the things that I was loving doing, and where I had to make a change, and you know it, it's something that it doesn't happen overnight, but. We, we started making different decisions and um, we, we made a lot of decisions to do the things that we wanted to do now. 
and not waiting until, you know, when A, B, C, and D looked a certain way, then we'll start doing all the things we want to do. So um, that would be one of the one of the best things that I could say is um, taking a really clear picture on what's working and what are the things that you truly, truly want to be doing with your life and what are the ways you really want to be spending your days and really making sure that your life has as much of that in it as possible. It might not be able to be a full 100% right now, but even if there's certain things that you can start to do to pull into your world today, now, it's, it's so important to be in a space where we're living now. We're not waiting to go and live our lives 10 years from now or 20 years from now. But what if you make the wrong decision, Jess? <laughs> wrong decision about what? About what you should be doing? About anything. <laughs> Well, I think that I don't think there's a wrong decision. I think that there's lessons and, um, you know, there, there's lessons that happen in life, but I don't think there's a wrong decision. If it's something that in your heart is what you truly want to be, it's truly what you desire to be doing, you can't make a wrong decision if it's, you know, if, if that's how you're feeling about it. It might be, you know, I want to go do this and you might need to do it just for a few months as opposed to maybe like for the rest of your life. I don't know, but it's something that paying attention to those feelings and to that intuition and to that voice inside your head. That's like, Ooh, like, okay, back to this job today. Like I hate my job. And I, you know, really wish that I was, you know, rather an interior designer, like, you know, just really paying attention to what those, what those nudges are, because the more that we, ignore those nudges, the louder that they get. Mm. And so, you know, my, my whole thing about how we operate and how we live our life is that the time is now, this is life, you know, this is not the dress rehearsal. This is the real deal right now. And um, we get to make the most out of it and, uh, and, and live a life on, on our own terms. Whoa, I love it. Well, we're, <laughs> we're definitely getting to the end of the first interview for everyone who's watching this right now. If you haven't upgraded to the all access pass, hurry up and upgrade because I do a bonus interview with Jess. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of go more in depth uh, within entrepreneurship and being an, being an impactful entrepreneur. And, um, you know, again, the, the vulnerability and, and, and take an action so you could truly learn. So if you haven't upgraded, go and upgrade. Now, with that being said, Jess, uh, is there any last words that you kind of want to leave off with the audience uh, before we get into, on to the next interview? Um, sure. Yeah. I mean, I would just say like, just like self-compassion, like just don't be so hard on yourself and, uh, just meet yourself where you're at today. And, uh, we're all on this journey called life and, you know, everyone's doing that the best we can with the information we have. And when we know better, we can do better and, uh, just be patient and, um, consistency is key. You heard it first. <laughs> Justine <laughs> Levenberg. Cool. So Justine, thank you very much for, for everyone watching. We will see you in the next interview again. Justine Levenberg. My name is Daniel Francis. I'm the host of the 30 day speaker summit and I hope you got a lot of value out of this interview. We'll see you. We'll see you very soon.